Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul, and in this Rick to the video, we're going to be discussing the release of Ryzen and Vega, according to AMD themselves. We have updated information on the Summit Bridge platforms, specifically the motherboards which will be on offer. And we also have a few more rumours concerning the pricing. First of all, let's talk about Ryzen. Ryzen for desktops, in other words for customer-based systems, is expected to ship in early March 2017. For server-based processors, you're going to have to wait until the Q2 2017. And Lisa Su has also said that there will be a widespread system availability from day one. But here's where it gets more interesting. She has said <clears throat> that the likes of HP and Dell will probably have their samples of processors come later than retail. What this basically means is AMD are focusing on enthusiasts. Now, there's probably a good reason behind that, and that is that if you can nail down enthusiasts, the rest of the market does typically lead, simply because, obviously, enthusiasts are usually the ones who are writing reviews, putting videos online, making posts on social media, writing on forums, doing recommendations, and therefore, for folks who either are just buying a pre-built system, whatever the case, it's good to have that market trend, so AMD are looking to firmly appeal to enthusiasts, most likely. Another small tidbit is Ryzen is to take on Intel's highest end core chips. Specifically, Lisa Su mentioned the i5 and the i7. Excuse my voice, by the way, I'm still getting over the last remnants of the cold, which is kind of annoying. She also, um, of course, did touch just briefly on Vega, and in a Q4 2016 Operational Accomplishments highlight image, it said that Vega is expected to ship in Q2 2017. And as we've discussed numerous times over, there are going to be numerous architectural advancements, including memory subsystem, next generation geometry pipeline, compute engine, and new pixel engine. In other words, this is a much more advanced version of the GPUs that AMD are already putting out. So what about the platform that Ryzen actually operates on, which just for clarification's sake, is AM4 and Summit Ridge. Asus, Gigabyte, MSI, and ASRock will all be putting out commercial motherboards. Now, the price is expected to be between 150 to 200 US dollars for these higher-end motherboards. Now, it is worth noting, of course, that you will be able to buy cheaper ones, but obviously, if you don't want overclocking or you don't want, let's say, uh, multiple graphics card configurations available to you, then that's down to you. For the sake of this video, do remember that the B350 is going to be like high-end, but you don't get necessarily multiple graphics cards available to you, and extreme overclocking is also not really supported, whereas the X370 is the board that if you are going to be running, let's say, two Vega cards or two Titans or whatever you end up running, plus you really want fine-grained control of overclocking, then X370 is going to be the board, in which case it's going to be a bit more expensive. We've also seen some shots which have appeared already online uh, from, once again, Asus and MSI and a couple of other vendors. And as you can see, they've got all of the technology that you would expect from an updated motherboard. So, for example, you've got, you know, various temperature controls, you've got USB 3.1, all the SATA ports that, you know, you could ever possibly want, eSATA, um, and goodness knows what else. Bits and chips... Um, have also said, well, more specifically, one of the, the actual creators of the website, Futenberg, has said that he believes the CPUs Ryzen are going to cost about $500, that's US, at maximum, simply because of the price of the main boards. It wouldn't make sense for them to be so much more expensive. It would be almost disproportionate. Now, obviously, that's by no means uh, clarification. And as I said, there have been a couple of other reports that have said there were going to be five SKUs for Ryzen available, but no one really knows for sure is really what it comes down to when it comes to Ryzen. And Vega is even more ambiguous, because the only reports we really have are some leaked roadmaps and images that have popped up, and how accurate they are going to be in, let's say, six months or whenever Vega is actually announced, and more to the point, available in retail, we just don't know. But... With Vega, supposedly there's going to be the Vega 10, Vega 11. Vega 11 is going to be more the equivalent of like the Polaris replacements. 
Whereas Vega 10 is going to be the high-end board. It's going to be the board which uh, features high bandwidth memory 2 and all of the other bits and bobs that we've been discussing. Now, ultimately, we're just going to have to wait in terms of Vega. We've seen a hell of a lot of stuff in terms of the um, you know, specifications of it, in terms of you know the, the actual architecture, but what that does in terms of raw performance, we're just going to have to wait. And as always, remain sceptical until you've actually seen a piece of hardware run with real benchmarks rather than very stringent testing conditions. That's my personal opinion anyway. Uh, this video is going to be a bit shorter because as you can tell my voice is still very crackly. I am feeling a lot better though so hopefully I can actually get to work quite frankly because it's been a very frustrating couple of days. I've been feeling quite shitty the past few days and it's not really been conducive to well anything uh, with actual extreme levels of concentration so I apologize for that. I apologize for not being able to uh, do a lot of the stuff that I've said I've wanted to, but um, when you've got migraines and stuff, it's not really the best of uh, working conditions. So I have a couple of videos that I'm going to be working on. As I've mentioned previously, there are a couple of reviews coming up um, that I'm waiting to get hardware for, and also I have got the GPU one that I've said you know how GPU uh, how GPUs work. I have started the script on that, but I've just been so feeling so crappy it's very hard to focus on something very technical and you know have a migraine at the same time and there's also going to be everything we know about the xbox scorpio specifically focused on specifications but also the generic side of the machine and i think that's about it apart from a few other bits and bobs that i've mentioned a couple of times over so hopefully you've enjoyed this video as i said sorry it's a bit brief but um yeah Hopefully you've enjoyed it anyway. I'll see you soon. Take care of yourselves. Oh, and someone mentioned to me on Twitter that they've had, I've had a couple of mic problems with crackling. Do blast me on Twitter again if you are still experiencing problems. As far as I know, I've done some audio testing. This seems to have cleared it up. But if not, find me on Twitter. Um, it's in the video description. Look for my personal Twitter. It's Paul. And uh, let me know. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.